Seven o'clock, we'll get the meeting started. We'll call it to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey. Roll call. Ms. Atchison? Here. Mr. Hall? Here. Mr. Hogue? Present. Ms. Marlington? Present. Ms. Favreau? Here. Uh, Mr. Nixon? Here. And Mr. Conley is here. Um, recognize our planning official, Mr. Moore, here this evening. And um, next we have is um, a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting. So we have to look at tonight's minutes, or, or we have to look at the minutes from the last meeting and let me know if there's anything we need to do about them. That would have been what, August? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we skipped September. Mm -hmm. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting, August 1, 2023. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We have uh, we have minutes for August first to uh, twenty twenty three. Next, we need to look at tonight's agenda. Sure that we can live with that before we get going. I'll make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Any discussion or anything we need to look at? Hearing nothing. All in favor of approving tonight's agenda. Uh, aye. 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 All opposed? We have an agenda. Um, item six, public comments. Those citizens wishing to speak on agenda and non-agenda items will be allowed a maximum of four minutes each to address their concerns. This is the only time during the meeting that citizens are allowed to address the Planning Commission. Please state your name and address for the record if you would like. Any public comment here tonight? Or do we have any on Zoom? If, if you have a question, I'll be happy to entertain it. But... Um, that's certainly appropriate for public comment if you want to do that. Uh, we may or may not, I mean, well, I'm, I'm happy to bend the rules and, and answer because we typically don't answer, have a question to answer this this time. But if you'd like to come on, up and you don't have to come up if you don't want to, but if you have some questions, we can wow. hear them and and uh, and go from there. If it gets too long, um, we'll okay. Uh, so we're we're planning on building. I'm sorry, you state your name. Okay, and. I, my fiance are planning on building a um, health and wellness spa in Cedar Springs. And we were instructed to come here to the, the city, what they think of that um, being a recreational facility, food recreational facility in Cedar Springs. I don't know if it's quite politically the way to say it, but that's kind of just coming out and saying it. Yeah, it would. I mean, in general, uh, we don't we, we wouldn't normally say no. We don't like your kind of business, or we do like your kind of business, because in the end, it's it's your business. It's what what you would want to do if you think it's viable, and and that it's more a question of would it the place you've selected for it would it fit the kind of use that we've set aside for the things that should go there. Do you have a specific place that you're looking at? We have in West Hall. Hold the vacant lot. The vacant house. Yeah. We're going to put a bid on the property, but we wanted to come to the commission and see if that be a good idea. <laughs> Us building there, a health and wellness spa. Yeah, I remember. That. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, there's nothing in the code that would stop that, right? I did talk to probably you a couple times, mm -hmm. and I did refer it to. If to Mr. Moore, our city planner, had some general discussion. Um, yeah. No. Um, so we exchanged some emails on, on this. So the um, 
Could you, I guess, describe a little bit how, how the place would operate and what you have in mind specifically? Well, it's health and wellness. So we, during COVID, why we want to come up with this. COVID was the only thing that wasn't shut down because it was sanitary. They had chemicals to kill, you know, and this is more his idea than mine. But I, just, <laughs> I just have the companies to come up here and say, mm -hmm. so Tony came up with this great idea. Hey, I want to build a health and wellness spa where it's not just a spa like Oasis, but it's more delivered around, you know, educational, wellness, you know, um, massaging, you know, just stuff like that, that you would normally have, like, you know, sort of like at the YMCA, but local, but here in mm -hmm. Springs, because there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking for a business to buy, or we're looking for a place to build it that's in Cedar so we can get the community and, you know, and get them involved and mm -hmm. help them out. Let's go. The business model, like from an operational perspective, be similar to like an oasis where, because that's a place right where people will rent a spa for some like, number of hours, presumably. I don't know how it for works. For special exactly. occasions. Yeah. But there, that's more like a, rec I would say that'd be more recreational. You, you want to have, you know, massage, massage tables, you know, like, you know. We're buying are going to be more around, you know, like hot tubs, but they're like more for health and wellness. Just like so, there, yeah. I guess if that would like for for everybody from the little to all the big to all the big temperance and stuff like that as well. We don't really have anything around it. So, in interest of time, um, I'm, I don't think you're hearing a lot of people saying, no, don't do it. Uh, I think uh, your best bet is to work with Darla here. She has a really good idea of what the what the requirements are, what all of the necessary situations that have to be fulfilled. And then hopefully you can come up with something that works for you all and bring it up to us and it'll be easy and we'll be able to just approve it and you'll be on your way. Uh, but I'm sure she can definitely um, work with you to help you see, you know, to, to help you be aware of what all the requirements are. Yeah. Also, kind of put together some type of a site plan and what you want to do on that facility site, and that that helps a lot. The majority of it, it's gonna, it's, it's just you know hot tubs. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to stick. Uh, water jets. Yeah. 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 So it's not actually a physical person doing this. I think we show water jets. Mm -hmm. yeah. With more updated spas, you know, we're talking about maybe five or six spas. If we build it. You know, it's kind of hard to find a building that's can accommodate that type of plumbing, and so we're we're still in the works with it. You know, we're still we're, we're just you know we want to see what's out there, what we need to do. It's helpful for us is um, we like to have a nearby box in the road. It makes it easier for us and for you, right? If you guys have, if you're going to build, make sure you go with somebody that's, I think, approved would probably be appropriate to say that has a site plan, has the big thing we always run into is parking lots. Is there enough space for the size of the business? And there's enough lighting. Those are the things. And, and is the entrance the right entrance? And usually that's probably more of a city road commission question. But those are the things that we run into that sometimes are roadblocks when you guys come in front of us. So I would say have a good site plan in order. Make sure your parking lot's in order. Make sure you got a good lighting plan mm -hmm. and drainage, probably, right? I mean, all the things that we look at regularly when people come to us and we go, well, <laughs> and we're going to talk signs tonight, but uh, <laughs> having an appropriate sign, it works too. Yeah. yeah. You definitely have the right idea in mind. Sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, mean to go talk over you. You definitely have the right idea in mind to come to the city first to, so you don't go too far down a path and then find out, oh, that's not going to work. 
So I think you're at the right place at the right time and good luck. All right, everybody, excuse me. I'm going to take off because I can't call this coughing and I don't want to interrupt them more. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to okay. check again for Zoom before I close the public for the public comments. And it looks like he's shaking his head no. So. Okay. All then we're right. going to close the public comments if that's if we hit everybody. Okay. And then um, move on to conflicts of interest, next parte communication. Disasterly deeds on the part of the planning commission. Good to know. <laughs> Number eight, schedule public hearings. It looks like there aren't any. So we're on to nine site plan reviews. Uh, item A, strange routes, uh, 40 North Main, uh, marijuana retail application and site plan review. So I think we've seen this before in some incarnation. Of you want to catch us up on where we're at with this now? So we did a review of the uh, plans for this back in July, and I believe everything was fine except for they didn't have a municipal license because the former owner had to send that, and then the city would have had to issue them a new one. So I think the person on Zoom calling correctly might be the the applicant's representation, and he might be able to provide a little additional background, but I think that's basically where we're at with this. Okay. Um, I will, I can't see your name from here. I'm sorry. So if I, I'll recognize you if you'd like to speak. Hi, good evening, uh, Attorney James McGilly on behalf of the applicant, Strange Roots LLC. Good evening, everybody. Um, so Mr. Mr. Moore's correct. Uh, this was initially um, heard uh, for, at the first blush, I suppose. Back in July, it was tabled for the reasons stated by Mr. Moore. Uh, Mr. Lucas, the uh, uh, most recent former operator from this location under Michiganja, RK Agricultural Enterprises, um, he has now signed and submitted a rescission letter for his local permit to operate a cannabis retailer from this specific location. Um, I believe that I've certainly seen it sent um, to the city. Um, it, is anyone able to confirm receipt on behalf of the city of Mr. Lucas's letter? I believe it was dated yesterday. I'm I'm seeing that we have, I'm getting nods that we have received it, yes. Okay, excellent. Um, so I believe that was the uh, the sticking point, if you will, as far as the city's ability um, to issue a replacement local license so that it would be only one um, existing at any one time. Um, so Mr. Lucas and Michiganja have now rescinded their local license. Um, they are in, They will be in the process of transferring assets to my client um, so that it can basically step into the shoes of Michigan and continue operations from this location. Um, so the, the interior of the premises will not be altered to any drastic degree is my understanding. Um, I think the only thing that my client is will, wishing to do is possibly upgrade or update the siding um, outside. Uh, I believe that he wishes to uh, sort of replicate the appearance of the brewery across the street. Um, and I just have a follow-up question when the time permits of just confirming which permits or applications might be necessary from the city in order to uh, amend and update the siding on the exterior of the building. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so um, I briefly went over your, uh, your July memo on this. And um, as you said, it, it was um, pretty much met everything we're looking for, unless you correct me if I'm wrong on that. Correct. So it's, it's the same as the previous approved building that was already there. Um, the use is the same, the building's the same. In most instances, we wouldn't even bother with this stuff because they're not changing anything. Um, adult use marijuana is a little bit different, but um, we didn't have any, any significant concerns with what they were proposing or anything like that. Um, so we had, you know, subject to everything else being figured out, we had suggested approval of it. Um, I think at the end of our memo, we had a couple of things here that um, could be discussed. So uh, any changes in signage, any changes in outdoor lighting, waste disposal, um, and then building materials, which he's, he's just addressed. I don't have any problem with them changing the exterior of the building or the siding. Um, if they wanted to do something different, that's fine. They may have to get a building permit, but I'm not even sure that they would need to do that. 
Um, but it's worth checking with IMS to see if they would need a, a, a building permit for it. But from our perspective, they wouldn't have to do anything else. Uh, we're primarily focused on you know, the, the building itself, the layout, the parking, land use, and all of those things are not changing from what was there previously. So we did include a draft motion recommending approval or that would approve it um, if you chose to adopt that with some conditions. Most of them are are pretty standard. It, it's 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 a little long, but we're also um, in the conditions of approval. This is on page nine of my report from July. Well, seven. seven for those of us looking in our packet. Yeah, yeah. So there's seven to eight. So in that motion, and there's the first two uh, conditions of approval would be they they get their permits. Um, they operate the facility in conformance with the with the Michigan uh, regulation and taxation marijuana act number three basically incorporates all of their representations that they've made in writing with their submittal so uh, the answers to the special land use questions the older control plan the hazardous chemicals the ADA board elimination all, all that stuff is sort of memorialized in this so if they deviate from what they're representing here obviously that could be some kind of potential issue but you know we don't have any reason to believe they would do that um number four signing and signage and lighting would meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance five there's any additional concerns or requirements from the fire department or the engineer the attorney i don't know what they would be but hypothetically if there was some something that came up they had to comply with um, then five just gives the city uh just notes that the city may exercise all available enforcement remedies remedies upon finding that there is a violation because this is a special land use permit. Um, the city does have the power to suspend or revoke special land use permits um, if there is a violation. And um, you know, again, we haven't seen that, but it's something that we often put in the conditions of approval for stuff like this, just so it's it's clear and everyone knows kind of where we're at. So. Again, we don't have any any other major, major concerns. We recommend that approval of it. Um, if there's any other, I guess, comments or questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. But with the application of some process, does the condition one cover that? Like we approved as is with the application that was just canceled but is not approved yet. Does that cover that condition? If we, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, okay. so I, I just wanted to make sure we clarified before we made a motion. Yeah, so that would include, and, and mostly this, this that last sentence there that says this includes any necessary permits granted by the city of Cedar Springs. That's really what we're getting at is, is the municipal license is the major potential sticking point there, and they've satisfied that. Any other questions or comments? Make the motion if you to, want, if you want to approve it. the suggested whims and works as the motion. Do I need to read through the whole thing? Well, that's up to the clerk. As long as you're happy with taking the presented, presented. All right, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Well, hearing none. All in favor of approval, we signify by aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Um, and I want to make sure that the that the applicant's representative there got his question answered regarding um, the siting because we kind of blew past that. So, it, but uh, uh, did you get everything that you needed, sir? That's what I was. I, I, as far as the siting goes, I believe I did. I'll contact IMS and find out and follow up with them. Um, it did. Uh, I do have two follow up questions, very briefly, if you wouldn't mind indulging me. So the first was about the signage. Um, if my client decided just to swap out the signs, same dimensions, no illumination, just changing the names on them, would that require anything more formal than the permissions that you seem to have um, that you seem to have extended this evening? You'd have to do an application for a sign permit with the city. Everything's the same right now. I'm sorry, you broke up. I do apologize. To to pull a sign permit. Okay. Um, and then the final question was, I noticed that um, within 10 days of approval, special land use approval, the additional $2,000 application fee is due. 
Um, will there be anything formally sent out by way of an invoice or should my client just present a check to the city within 10 days of this evening? Typically do not send out invoices. I can if you would like one, but. Oh. No, just wanted to double check. So I'll, I'll arrange for them to remit the, uh, I think there were the additional 2000 to make the full 5,000 application fee. And those were all my questions. Thank you very much. always nice to yes. work with something that's all well put yes. together. <laughs> okay, moving on to other business. Um, item 10A, discuss, uh, I'm getting feedback from something. Maybe I'm too close to your mic. Um, discuss joint meeting with Solon Township Planning Commission. So what's up with that? Well, fail from um, Mr. Ellick, the Solon Township Supervisor, because we have a joint 425 agreement with Solon Township. Um, annually, we're supposed to be meeting with Solon Township's Planning Commission. And my, I understand it hasn't happened in the last seven years. Don't know why, but um, ever. ever. Oh, the um. So I know we meet on Tuesday nights. Solon Township Planning Planning Commission meetings are the fourth Wednesday monthly. Or would you, I would like to meet with them just to have, you know, a general discussion. I think that would be helpful, but it's up to you. Request them to come here on a regular Tuesday night. Come to our meeting. That okay. would be great. Have a joint. Um, on the... Isn't recorded, or is that just something where it's a discussion? Mm -hmm. it would be a special meeting. Yeah. So it would be a special meeting of the city council, and the council policy is that these meetings are recorded. Yes. Okay. Um, if we have it on our night, then that would disrupt any planning things we needed to do. So maybe for the sake of both parties, pick a neutral date where we can all meet. That's uh, here or here preferably. But I don't know how big their room is out there. I don't know either. I don't, know how big it is. I don't think it's that large, but still I'd be receptive to another meeting. That's all we can do really. Or Wednesday or Tuesday. Verbal Wednesdays yeah. are difficult for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I could make it happen, but it, it's just, like I said, it's much more difficult for me to get free on a Wednesday night. Pretty much the same. I've built my life around keeping Tuesdays free. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have such a busy life, but. Any Tuesdays out of the question? Any time between now and. Eight on Tuesday, I have. Uh, that would be October 17th. Uh, if you want me present, I mean, not that I'm the be all and end all, but I'm gone for a conference that week. Second, yeah, the, yeah, the following third week in October would be fine. Third or fourth, you know. And as a special meeting, we don't have to have too long of a notice on this, right? That's not a. Wanted to make sure that we were posted. Okay, I can coordinate with their um, representatives on give them a couple dates, options, request it be here. I'll be gone on the 31st. Oh, yeah, Halloween would be a bad time yeah. to do that. <laughs> go on, I'll actually be in Florida, but that's yeah, okay. That is pre rut, so we got to schedule around that. <laughs> Halloween that day. So. Well, I, like I said, I don't care about <laughs> Halloween. That's free. Yeah, the twenty fourth then. Well, anybody else conflicted on the twenty fourth? Oh, uh, which one? October. No. A few weeks away. No, it's a uh, week prior that I'm busy. I'm out of town. No, that's for sure. It hasn't done November, so it's hasn't happened for twenty years. So I think we should get in as soon as we can. Yes. This is reasonable, but but. And then we should probably, if it, we were all unaware, I believe, that that was a requirement of the 425 agreement, we'll, from this point on, we will definitely adhere to it. But yes, we we will 
get it when it's mutually agreeable to all parties. We'll start with 2024 one on our calendar too at that time. <laughs> okay, then um, speaking of that, let's move on to the 2024 proposed calendar. That's next on the agenda. I think we set the dates and if we can't make it, that's kind of a. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, in general, we do, unless we yeah. see something that's just obvious that is going to be a problem. And I, from what I saw, it looked like I'm very mic'd tonight. I'm, I'm very loud. You <laughs> in here, so. <laughs> Back maybe a little? With your voting? Oh, um, if you have Three. There, um, that are going to conflict with 2024 elections, and you'll see those after 25 because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, you know, we will do what we got to do. I think pick a good date that doesn't interfere with the election. Here that we think is just a sore thumb sticking out that we should work around. Otherwise, we'll just work around day to day. I will miss the. First one, but that'll be a that's the only one that shows a conflict with me. So, go ahead. I have no light, so yeah, I'm here. But I can always zoom in from Florida too. Mine's on purpose, though. Yeah, um, you can zoom in as long as you don't vote. Is that how it works at this point? Yeah, so that's cool. Well, I'll get to okay, so any problems then with this, or do you need more time to? Look it over. The only thing I would know is some of these dates may be because of the nine days of early voting. So your room may be a little bit reconfigured, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, we should be able to make it look as close to possible um, before that meeting time. So um, the nine days of early voting before each of these election days. So that's quite a bit of time, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so it's not so burdensome on staff here. We can come. You know, it's not a big deal. Election is far more important. It, I mean, if is that basically reflect the least burdensome days from what from what you could see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The biggest thing I had mentioned to Darla was that the March meeting, um, February meeting. Mm -hmm. We don't know when the presidential primary is going to land yet. They haven't decided that date yet. So that may impact those meeting dates just a little. And I think the best solution for us was to schedule them where we think that they're, they're going to be. And if they need to be changed, we'll cancel and call a special meeting. Okay. There's just no good way to. Oh, you can do. No way to get around it. Are we good then to vote on this? We have to vote to accept it, right? Ready to go back otherwise we can bring it back to next month yeah just I'm, do it. I'm good we'll take a motion then to approve it i'll make a motion to approve the 2024 calendar i'll second or cherry do we need to uh hold on do we i forgot to see do we need to change the resolution number on it, it says 2023-1 that i don't know if that was important I'm still in 23 is that okay i just want to make sure that it wasn't our first resolution yeah, here sure. People, we need more resolution. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's our first one. Wow. All right. So, I'll make a motion to. Uh, and then, and then you still have a second from one of you two. Yeah. Whoever pick they, one. They came in at the same time. Mr. Nixon, how about that? I'm having right. The discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We have a calendar. Moving on, um, the box signs. I see we have a lot of reading material here, Mr. Moore, that you provided us from uh, four different municipalities. Since at the last meeting, you asked for some examples from <laughs> communities around you, and so that's what you got. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, the so this is, is presented here as information you know it's a lot of communities like to see what some of their neighbors are doing in terms of um i'm not super familiar with all of them but i'm familiar with some of them i'm most familiar with lowell's because we uh wrote it and then we wrote it recently 
Um, we've also worked with, with Greenville some. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that, that we started talking about a while back that makes you guys unique is that most um, of my, I think all of my clients don't regulate them like box signs, for example, or panel signs and some of these things that Mr. Walnut was talking about. We don't, I don't know of anyone who does that to that level of, of, of detail. So a lot of this discussion to me centers around kind of what's your comfort level. So you don't have to do anything. You have an ordinance in place now. It works okay for the most part. You don't allow those those internally illuminated oxy signs. If you want to continue that practice, as that is absolutely fine. Um, if you want to you know, further regulate signage in terms of um, how they're illuminated, or if, you, if you're using channel cut lettering, like we had talked about that a little bit, some of the newer signs, particularly some of the ones in, the, uh, in that strip mall at the corner, um, they have those channel cut letters. So if, because the concern was with box signs, if somebody moves out, someone just buys a new plastic panel, slaps it in there, and you're good to go. And the same, you know, perhaps unappealing sign stays there for ever and ever and ever and ever. Whereas if they're channel cut signs, the whole thing has to come out. It's easier to get compliance that way because you, someone comes in with a new sign, you can get them to go smaller or make any changes, whereas those boxes tend to stick around for a longer term. Um, but it's the hand that's really kind of up to you in terms of just what your sort of appetite is for regulating signs if you want to take things I shouldn't say farther, but if you want to make any changes or you know look further into regulating materials. Um, one of the things that uh, Mr. Womack had talked about was you know, he had expressed some concerns about those. There are some signs on Main Street here where it's it's just a simple plastic sign that's just sort of screwed into the wall. Um, some of those, I think, you know, we might run into sort of issues figuring out how to, how to distinguish between the two or sort of if we can, like, if we can make a, distinct, a, a distinction in, in regulate, you know, plastic sign versus a metal sign versus a wood sign. A little hesitant on those things because if you get challenged, you're going to say, "Well, you know, what's the basis for your regulation?" And I don't know that. Well, we think this looks kind of crummy, or whatever. You know, that might not be a good enough reason for regulating something like that, especially when we're talking about signage. Um, so a lot of this is is to so sort of ask you sort of what you're comfortable with. Um, some of the examples here, so like I know off the top of my head in, in, in Lowell, they're pretty restrictive with signage. Um, everywhere in their city, even out by the, like on Fulton Street, sort of on the west side of town, they only allow a freestanding sign to be 50 square feet. They, they only allow a, a wall-mounted sign to be 50 square feet, um, which is smaller than what a lot of communities regulate. Um, in their downtown, they only allow wall signs and, and projecting signs. Um, there, we've never dealt with those box signs because I don't think anyone has ever even asked for one there. So some of it is just that because you have, and I think that strip mall is probably the most, most aren't typically zoned in the same district as the rest of your historic downtown. So you kind of have a different set of challenges with trying to fit that in with what you do. Um, <coughs> looking at the city's sign ordinance, I think one of the things that makes it a little bit cumbersome is that you have your sort of your highway commercial and your downtown and your other commercial districts all sort of lumped into the same chapter. And so you're trying to do a lot of things in one section and it might make it a little confusing. But um, again, these are sort of broad suggestions. We could certainly look to propose some changes to you, but um, I also am not sure sort of what your what your appetite is as a planning commission for regular. You don't have to do anything. Want to do more, you can do more if we as we get more used to this over the you know over the coming months and years, if we identify clear problems where we say, okay, this is completely confusing and it's repeated causing issues, we can bring you an amendment. Like I guess. From there, alternative to the chairman, if you have any questions or there's any comments on that. 
the next sense first, and I'll go to you after that, Mr. Hall. So, uh, the biggest thing, like with box signs, I think, you know what, we could just leave it alone. If we were able to differentiate for Miss Darla to be able to go in and be able to regulate that they fix up or paint the structure, you know what I mean, around the what what is holding the plastic, right? Because that's what looks bad a lot of times is because you've had businesses that just throw in another piece of plastic, now they're not taking care of the actual structure. So then if we have something where Miss Darla could be able to go in and say, no, 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 no you got to paint that or add another piece of metal or a piece of wood. Um, I do agree with Mr. Womack with uh, like banners. Those shouldn't be allowed. But with the panel sign, we had discussed about putting like a wooden border around it. I don't know that that would be too bad. And is there a way that we could just say, hey, if you're putting a panel sign up, can you just take some one by two or something, stain it and, you know. Um. <laughs> it would give it some depth and it would actually make it kind of look off the building versus just flat on flat. And then. Yeah, I mean, you could, I suppose, try to require some kind of framing around them. Um, again, the challenge is going to be how do we phrase that in a way that you get what you want sure. and you can also defend it. So when someone says, why are you doing that? Something durable. Have a sort of a good reason behind it. Because if someone, yeah, someone could put some uh, and I guess where I'm coming from is that you can see in a situation where somebody say, okay, we'll put, we'll put a frame around it, and they'll put a frame around it, but and, and they'll stain it, and maybe they won't do a very good job of staining it, or they won't do a very good job of putting it together, and then it kind of falls apart, or it starts to expand, or do whatever, and then we're sort of right back to where we started with something that doesn't look great. We do have standards that require, you know, the signs to be maintained and kept in good repair and things like that, but we, we get into some gray areas on those things, and we want to say, see, this is falling in, in into disrepair. Somebody else can say, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. Or here's how it's held together, and it's definitely not going to fall apart. And it's just this is just a normal weathering process. And I don't, I'm not trying to argue with you, you know, about it, but I'm just kind of thinking, thinking uh, out how, how loud about how we would try to prohibit you from deal with these. Yes, yeah, it's challenging situation. Well, unless you want to follow up, because we had a question we wanted to be recognized earlier. Here we go again on the box signs. I remember being on the planning commission way when we discussed this, and we got a lot of input from the merchants, and they didn't. They they wanted them. They they liked them. And this is where we've been, and and uh, now all of a sudden they're wrong and bad. So I think you know it's worked for a long time, and this ordinance can be amended as we see a problem. So I'm for leave it alone. Right now, box signs are prohibited in the downtown. Mm -hmm. There's box signs in the downtown. Yeah. Been here. Yeah. So they're here, and if they fall apart, then they wouldn't be able to get put back up. Or if somebody takes one down and wants to replace it, they can't replace it with one down. So you're going to have these non-conformities probably for a really long time. Because we have to allow people to swap out those panels. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Then I have something I want to yeah. say after that. I, I mean, being well myself. Oh, I mean, the businesses that are on Main Street, I feel like they're handicapped by not having a good sign. When you look at the pip pictures and they got those flat panels there's no lighting nothing makes your business stick out when you go up to the strip malls and see the lighted ladder signs it draws people's eyes to the building i don't know why we'd want to handicap 
our main street businesses from not having good signage. I mean, just because we don't want to discuss box signs. I mean, I think they all deserve to be able to have a good sign. These flat signs that are nailed to the sides of the buildings, if you ask me, they look like crap. Some do. I will start handicapping. They can't have a good sign. Well, are we disallowing them from putting up the type of signs that are else? Well, or... That box signs are not allowed on downtown. So the box signs are. So yeah, yeah the those those metal signs that are the box with the plastic thing on the outside yeah. that are in, in, that are internally illuminated. Those are not allowed downtown. There are a ton of other types of signs they could have. It will look great. Yeah. And <laughs> That would not be box signs, right? I mean, you, there's nothing that would prevent people from having a a decking sign or having a, a nicer looking panel sign with some external illumination coming out over the top of it. There's lots of things that businesses can do um, outside of just that one type of sign. But I mean, you're right. If you want to make life easier for those businesses, that being more liberal in what you're allowing for signage is potentially one way to do it. Um, a lot of downtown businesses are afforded additional types of signs, whether they're window signs, sandwich boards, projecting signs, wall signs, marquees, and different types of things, because we recognize that yeah, you don't, because the businesses are sort of packed in a, a little bit more tightly, it's e easier to miss them. Um, because they're subject to some other additional regulations. They have to be smaller usually. We're more strict on lighting, et cetera. Um, it's different from here out by where. Well, like the, even, uh, even the C Cedar Springs Brewery shop that's no longer in business there. I mean, is that not a lighted box sign? Well, that's only like four, like four years old. But when you're talking about these panel signs, I'm sorry. Oh, go go ahead. Talk. You're also talking about money, and that's where these panel signs come in. And I know which one we're talking about, probably the same one, um, which it is a newer one. And, uh, you know, money comes into play because uh, Mr. Moore did discuss that, that the projected signs, the cut letter signs, they do cost more money. And but we do want businesses in the downtown area that's why I was like, you know, if they can't afford, you know, uh, even a box sign and they can afford the flat sign, putting a border around it would draw your eye. Do you think? I mean, I'm look, I'm asking well, you. Well, it was definitely out. If they're dressed up a bit, I just think they should have more options. Like the cut ladder signs, those are great signs. And it does get to your point to where if that business closes, the next business has got to replace it. It just seems like the sign ordinance is pretty strict for the downtown, correct? Uh, okay. Yeah. See what you're doing. Okay. Uh, yes and no. I mean, the box sign thing is unique. I don't know that any, I can think of any other clients that even identify a box sign as a specific sign site. So normally the box signs or a panel sign, they're all just wall signs. Any type of sign that you mount to the outside of a building is just called a wall sign. Yeah. And there's no made between whether it's a box or whether they're channel cut letters or whether it's a piece of plywood with spray paint on it or whatever like mm -hmm. it's all just a wall sign right? right um so that part of your ordinance is different from what i've seen in most of them. Um, so if you wanted to be more flexible then you could back off on the box sign restriction and just allow for wall signs projecting signs window signs usual and then a little Put a size parameter on it, but then let them kind of determine the sign and the illumination and everything else. I think some of the some of the concern, you know, years ago, and some of what Mr. Womack was talking about is by doing that, you also, you know, will likely end up with something that looks or something that doesn't look, you know, looks a little doesn't look as durable. It doesn't look as um, sturdy. That's a concern that he had, um, and you know, but at the same time, there are signs right now that can go up that are going to look that way. So I'm not sure how effective that is either. In terms of one could argue looks a little. Yeah. 
particularly sturdy and robust. So <clears throat> I want to kind of point out the not the elephant in the room, but but the reality that this entire discussion started at the behest of Mr. Womack. This was his idea, and he had some, I believe, some legitimate concerns that he brought it brought to the table. At the same time, I want what we do to help our current manager more than I want it to help our prior manager because we will have that perspective. Absolutely. But we would like to hear your opinion on um, on are you having or are you envisioning any trouble enforcing what you have? And if so, what changes would you make to make your life easier? I I do like easy and I I I've tackled quite a few um assigned requests actually and um you know kind of looked through what I thought and you know pass it on to Mr. Moore. Am I thinking this right? Is it allowed, not allowed? Um it, it is cumbersome, I'll I'll give you that. Buy it. I would be in favor. So back to one of your first thoughts. Would it be uh, congruent of us to kind of take this apart and delve it into three sections, as in commercial, B3 and historic downtown? Um, I think it would be helpful to separate out your downtown district. Okay. I don't know if it matters as much with B3 or um, I mean, commercial district. Because, but yeah, and, and you'll see in a couple of those ordinances, um, they have a table. So like in Lowell's, there's, it says like in, in your residential zones here, the science permitted, I'll say this and this, or this, or this, or this. And then there'll be a table that says the sign type, area, height, illumination, some other things. Um, so we could look at something like that. And I think for the downtown, that's really what this whole conversation is about, is a signage downtown. We, we might be able to say with more specificity, if we broke out that in, in a new section and said, in the downtown, here are your standards wall sign, projecting sign, so on and so forth, subject to these requirements, box sign, no box sign, we can cross our vision, we get to it. You know, internal illumination only versus external, some of that kind of stuff. Um, that might help because right now it's a little confusing because in, in your downtown, you could have a ground sign out front, which for a lot of these businesses, it makes no sense because they're built right out to the sidewalk. Yeah. Not all of them, but most of them um, are. And so, yeah. monument sign, if you look in that chapter, it allows for monument signs and pole signs and other stuff that you just typically don't need or wouldn't want in your downtown for the most part. So we can look at some of those um, as kind of maybe a way to help clean it up and your downtown isn't. Downtown zoning district is, is a little different because not every single property is right up to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Not every property is a typical main street, zero lot line type of thing like we have in some of those other cities that are regulated in here. So some of that's going to be a little bit different, um, but they're pretty, there's not many of them, there's only a couple. So I think most of it we could handle. So that could be a way to at least simplify the downtown part of it for sure. That might help. Help you guys kind of wrap your arms around what you're doing with the downtown and help and by extension myself kind of have ease of administration and when the public looks at it they can you know if, if you're a business you can say okay zone b2 you just open it up and that's what i can do and you don't have to try to parse through if you're b3 you can do this but if you're b1 you can do that but if you're b3 adjacent to a b1 that you know and all this other get rid of some of those conditional types of things i i like that idea yeah, so probably a new concept or whatever you know we make these ordinances and stuff and ultimately the impact of businesses and our manager and zoning officer have to deal with it yeah I'd like to have our zoning administrator and manager have a lot of input on 
that what are these signs yeah. we're going to do? Because ultimately, they have to enforce it. Yes. I don't think I would be speaking out of turn um, based on just looking and listening to us up here. If you made the ordinance that you liked, yeah. that would work for <laughs> a reasonable, so you know what this town is. You've been here a while. Correct. That works for the town that we have in conjunction with, with the help that Mr. Moore has. And you brought it to us. We're probably going to say yes, just because we want it to be streamlined and, and to work for everybody. I can't actually speak for everyone, but I'm just kind of trying to put that out there. Because honestly, the back and forth with us as a committee yeah. is going to get in the weeds really fast. And we're going to spend hours on this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm, 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 we're happy to to help you with that. But I also don't want to burden the process. Just be nice to have better than just a piece of aluminum nailed to the side of a building with vinyl graphics on it. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not what beautifies the downtown. And that's what half of them are now. Oh, Miss Starla, no banners. No banners. <laughs> no. I can't do it. I can't. Full board is to allow them to come up with some. New I know, but I'm giving her a pointer. No banners. <laughs> I don't think she'll have a problem with that. Oh, oh wow, banners as a temporary thing that you can have for 30 days. Yes. That'd be yes. I know it says, but there's nothing still, to do about it. And, I know Miss Darla knows this that they will still try to. Ooh, let me just slide under. Mm. <laughs> I don't think any better signage is probably the single most difficult part of the zoning that we. Yeah, it's impossible to get them a hundred percent right. It works for mm -hmm. everyone. You can get it pretty close, but yeah. it's a moving it's really target. Hard. It is. Change and, and yes. throw as they reimagine what they should be. Yes. Um. So you know what? Let's let's not let's not have perfect be the enemy of good enough at this point. We'll try for good enough. Obviously, we have some just some problems at the moment, and then we'll see how it works. Because yeah. I know the, the American Legion, the next door, their sign was broken, and they wanted to repair the digital part of the sign. Sign company came here. And that sign is not not allowed, even though it was allowed to be put there. I was on a planning commission then, and it was a long drawn out deal, and they were approved. Yeah, it was, but now it's not approved. So they could repair, not replace. But they would like to take, I think they got plans to take that brick area out. And the club manager would love to have a monument sign, not something up on a pole. Now, in like, like as of right now, that wouldn't meet, they won't even be allowed to do that. I thought he just said monument signs were well, allowed so far. Allowed. In, in B2? That's what, but that's what Mr. Moore said. Yeah, okay. I thought I read that earlier. Okay. It's up for them to decide. Yeah. We're out of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, than you too. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Is it and is it okay if I move on to yeah, uh, correspondence? Yeah. Open discussion not on the agenda. For issues not on the agenda. Correspondence. Uh, we have the 2023 calendar. That's what we have every month, right? Just letting us know what's upcoming. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have a variety of upcoming projects that I believe is just a placeholder for things that could be coming. Yeah. Is there anything? Any? motion on any of those that we need to know about no motion but i i would like to point out so at six o'clock tonight before this meeting we did meet with the owner of 28 south main she's let her be here um kind of asked her what her timeline was looking at like middle of 2024 um but i did field a phone call this morning um from a person that she reached out to to demolish the existing building so she may demolish it maybe grass it, you know, put grassy down and then but we told her once you come here and get approval, you better be ready to go. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Which one is 28 South Main? Yes. That's still the person that wants to do like the three story commercial on the main floor, two apartments on the second floor and 
two apartments on the on the third floor. Really? High end Great apartments. Problem. That would be I, very interesting. Oh, better than the old roundup. Oh, yes. Huh? Oh, Four in the basement. Hey, good news. Yeah. And then uh, item th A3, uh, legal non-conforming. I'm assuming these are two more um, uh, of those that we document to this meeting. It's in the pla it's in the packet. Mm -hmm. And um, um, zoning board of appeals, item four. Where is that? We had that special meeting, and those two were approved. Okay. Uh, staff comments then, uh, city manager. Um, 333 South Main. Talked about that before in Red Cross from Great Lakes Landscape. Great Lakes Landscape bought it. Um, I've met with that gentleman a couple times and everything he comes back to the table with, we, I tell him, whatever you put there, it has to be its own business. It can't be a subsidy of your Great Lakes Landscape business. And he's kind of struggling with what to put there. He, he wants to extend his business over there. And I said that it's not allowed. I'm sorry. So finally I called him a couple weeks ago and I said, I have a proposal for you. He said, what's that? I said, would you consider selling that lot to the city? And the reason I said that is we're working with an engineering company to basically redesign Morley Park, maybe take off that drive in the middle, have it a, a more pedestrian path with more connections, sidewalk connections to play areas, maybe another pavilion in there. And anything we put in there is gonna require more parking. So. I think it would just make sense if we could secure that piece, okay. make it more a formal parking with stairs going because it's kind of a steep. It's that kind could, of up on a hill. Yeah, that and could be lower down. Our planning for that whole area. For that. Um, they mentioned like six or eight pickleball courts could fit in south of the scout cabin. Oh. You know, that's a wet area, but you can fill that in and make extend our park bigger there. So. He said he was going to talk to his partner and let me know. I just thought I, sure. highest and best use of land. I mean, I to me that's just makes sense if the city owned that. So, great idea to expand that park instead of building new parks. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is a very well used park. I hate to ask this question, but is there any issue with the um, any contamination from the gas station that used to sit yeah. there? Where the parking lot is is contaminated. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The parking lot would basically cap it. We would just cap it with a sealed parking lot. Okay. There's they, there's a lot of problem there. They actually put the new tanks in to the north of that site, and uh, uh, they were above ground tanks and they were full. That's where you see the big mound out there, where even that probably could be uh, graded out and lessen the steepness or. However, but that was still put in there specifically to bring the grade up because of the tanks. Because the instant you said, well, that could be leveled out, so I'm like, does it get us into a contaminated zone yeah. there? I want to do that. Yeah. So I wasn't sure, but I'll let I'll let that be. Yes. I don't know. Grades still cap it. Yes. As long as the water isn't infiltrating down, they can cut it, haul out the waste, cap it, because it is a high right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Good deal. Great. Um, that was nothing back. Nothing back from the Van Ander Height Ford yet. Um, nope. I reached out to everybody that uh, Family Farm and Home Van Der Heide Ford. They're still in the planning stages. They're working on it. So, um, good. <laughs> <laughs> Until they give us the necessary paperwork, we can't bring it back to you. So it's I want it to move overnight. Uh, city clerk comments. Um, the one thing that I would mention is that your next planning commission meeting in November is second Tuesday because of that election. Um, November fourteenth. The good thing I'm not a deer hunter anymore. Day before opener. 
They don't have anybody here. They'd be all going to deer camp. I might be here. I'll be here. The um. Okay, so then Plank Commission members, any comments? I have two. Oh, I thought you were saying you have two comments. No. Uh, I, I have nothing, so let's move on. Um, planning consultant. I have nothing further to add. Thank you. Well, in that case, we're adjourned. Well, I'm going to see.